It's the first house I bought as a fighter. I said, prepare for my first world title fight at. And maybe I prepare for my last world title fight at. <laughs> this is where Roy Jones comes to clear his head as a big fight looms. A small lake behind his house in Pensacola, Florida. I'm on, y'all. I'm on. I'm on. Oh, you broke me. It's early December. In six weeks, Jones will try to land a big fish of a different sort when he meets Felix Trinidad in the ring at Madison Square Garden. There's plenty for Jones to mull over. He's 39 years old and has been on the receiving end of two vicious knockouts in his last four fights. When you go into a boxing match, you know, you don't know that you're going to come out the same. Maybe last time I see my people, Maybe last time I see my little one. Maybe last time my little one see me. <laughs> it's thoughts like these, however, that Jones leaves at the lake as he continues to ramp up training. My natural thing is to fight. That's what I do for a living. If you want it, you will get it. If you don't want it, then sit down and shut up. They're hoping that I've slowed down since I've gotten older. Age is not effective for me. This is a fight about pure skills. For a long time, Jones's skills were the best in the business. He was widely recognized as the fighter of the decade in the 1990s. A sensational barrage of left hooks. That was the most physically talented fighter to come along in my lifetime. He was impossible to hit. He had sudden power in both hands. It made you want to watch Roy Jones fight again, even if you'd never watched boxing before. He was that spectacular. He was that explosive. Because he had superlative speed, hand-eye coordination, and reflexes. His almost incomparable natural physical gifts gave him the right to fight as a genius artiste. He was the paradigm of the kind of fighter who rises in our current era to number one on the pound for pound list. He won world titles in four weight classes, including an historic victory over John Ruiz in 2003. The first time in the modern era, a former middleweight champion had won a heavyweight title belt. It had been a fantastic achievement. It was absolutely, you know, the, the apex of his career. But it would also be the beginning of the end as Jones moved back down to light heavyweight just eight months later to fight Antonio Tarver. He'd win the belt, but in sluggish and unconvincing fashion. Pretty much every fighter, later in their career, they slow down, they slide down the hill. Roy Jones didn't slide down the hill, he fell off a cliff. First in a rematch with Tarver in 2004. You got an excuse for tonight, Roy? And down go Jones on a hard left hand, and that is the most that Roy Jones has ever been hurt. It was the most electrically shocking moment in my 20 years of calling fights. And then, just four months later, in even more devastating fashion by journeyman Glenn Johnson. He takes right. a right hand and a left hand, and he's been knocked out again. My thinking was, this is the end. This is how a fighter's career ends. For Roy Jones, the Felix Trinidad fight will be the biggest challenge he's faced since his decline. It's a big time situation for me. It's a big time situation because, like I said, give me a chance to come back and let my fans see me as me again. Jones, you feel, is still looking for something. That element that made him seemingly indestructible, seemingly untouchable. People say, well, you shouldn't be fighting him more. Well, I would like to say, I don't want to fight no more, but that's not true, because I want to go out and fight like I can't fight. If it take me 11 rounds to knock him down, I'm probably going to quit boxing, because there's something wrong with me. Ese mismo ánimo de ellos para mí, yo, de mí para ellos también, de verdad que, este, yo amo a mi gente, quiero a mi gente demasiado. Tito, 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 Tito. It's a bond that was established years ago when Trinidad's spirit captured the hearts of Puerto Rican boxing fans everywhere. Trinidad seemed to me to be, in part, the Puerto Rican version of Oscar de la Hoya. 
a handsome kid with a great smile. And then on top of that, he was a knockout puncher. His charisma really just came in his belief in himself and the fact that he was just such a pure fighter. He loved his Puerto Rican heritage, his connection to the island. He loved his fans and celebrated openly with them and for them. Every Felix Trinidad victory was a triumph of passion in which he and his fans could share. They shared victories over the likes of Pernell Whitaker, Oscar de la Hoya, Fernando Vargas, and others. But Trinidad's last appearance in the ring in May 2005 was anything but triumphant. In a middleweight bout, Winky Wright handed the Puerto Rican icon just the second loss of his career in 12 one-sided rounds. He looked like a fighter who simply didn't have the same kind of pop, the same kind of speed anymore. The haircut was different, and the physique looked a little different, and he seemed to lack passion when he fought. It was strange seeing Felix Trinidad in that position. He could only do what he did so well. And once that was neutralized, it was the end of the game. The Trinidad fans are saying, what happened? I think there is something to be said for the image that you leave people with. And maybe it diminishes you somewhat. And the Winky Wright fight said, no, 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 this is not even the same guy anymore. After the loss, Trinidad announced he was leaving the sport. But in boxing, nothing is forever. And nearly three years later, at age 35, he's back once more for a fight against a fellow legend in Jones. Who are nothing now? Vargas. What Ryan said Vargas nothing now? Four. Okay. So what Ryan should get him again? Two. Okay, okay. So I need it here. I got you. My dad is like a best friend to me, and I'm not afraid to tell him anything, because that's my dad, and that's just how close we are. And we do plenty of things together. Like, we all play basketball, fish, yeah. play pool. This is a graveyard, what you have. I'm going to Look at it. Dad, this is impossible to show you. I'm going to show you how it is. Look at it. It's all awesome. good. They keep it going. His sons have been ringside for nearly every Jones fight in the last 10 years. Uh, give us a wink. Give us a wink. Fits in the air. Yeah. Uh, you got it. You got it, Dad. You got it. Knock him out. Just try to make him feel comfortable. Don't be afraid. I ain't scared, so y'all ain't going to be to be scared. I get nervous because it's like, man, I hope he doesn't get knocked out because I'm seeing many people get knocked out. I just pray and hope that he has fun doing what he's doing and just win the fight and just take us home, that's all. It's a relationship that bears little resemblance to the one Jones had growing up with his own father, Roy Sr. Roy Jones Sr. was a domineering, hard-edged, militaristic, somewhat mean-spirited father who forced his son to be a fighter and treated him harshly so that the harsh treatment would give him that edge that's necessary to compete. We just kind of keep our distance, and we keep our distance for a reason. Like, um, he's a very controlling character. And my dad, he never taught himself to respect me as an adult. We went through a 12 or 13-year period where we didn't talk. Jones stopped training with his father 15 years ago, replacing him with Alton Merkerson. And in the decade and a half since, it's Merkerson who's become like family to Jones. He just, the person that when you need him, he gonna be there. And you can't have for a better person. If I got to go down and fight, I want Mert to be tired right behind me because we're going to fight and go down together fight, and I know that. Roy Sr. still trains a stable of local fighters across town in Pensacola. Move the ladder on that. Move the ladder on that. But he rarely goes to his son's bounce. You know what I'm saying? Fight, fight. I used to watch them all, you know what I mean? But now I don't, you know. If he, if he train and prepare and so forth, I go watch, you know? The discipline disappear, you know? And if you don't have discipline, you know, you can't have dedication. The Joneses did try reuniting in 2005 when, for his third fight against Antonio Tarver, Junior brought Senior back to help train him alongside Merkerson. It seemed like it's the kind of thing, OK, I'm going to make peace with my world now. I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to stay on my feet. I'm going to bring the old man back. We'll close the circle, and then we'll walk off into the sunset. But it didn't turn out that way. Jones lost the fight after a lackluster 12-round performance. And then, bizarrely, after the fight, Jones claimed he didn't really want to win 
in part because he didn't want his father to get all the credit. And this is after he had broken the ice between them and gone to his father to ask him to come back and train him for that fight. I mean, what is he smoking? Turbulent water runs deep, and it ran deeper than any of us could know, and it was all bubbling to the surface during a fight itself. If I had to characterize the relationship between Don Felix and Tito compared to, say, Roy Jr. and Roy Sr., it would be oil over here, water over here, black here, white here. I mean, they've always been together in the corner. From the moment he first set foot in the ring at age seven, the boxing career of Felix Trinidad has been guided solely by his father and trainer, Felix Trinidad Sr. The connection between father and son was never more apparent than in the aftermath of Trinidad's last appearance in the ring. When Trinidad retired after the Winky Wright fight, it wasn't because Trinidad the fighter wanted to retire. It was because Trinidad the father felt that he was slipping in the corner and that he wasn't able to give his son what he needed. Tito siempre había dicho de, de pequeño que si el día que yo no podía estar al lado de él, que él no iba a seguir peleando. A ver, fue bien duro, ambos pues lloramos, sentimos sentimental. For the past six months, this has been Felix Trinidad's daily ritual. An early morning run with, among others, his father. Time away from the ring has served both father and son. For Trinidad Sr., a chance to refocus on staying healthy after a battle with high blood pressure and related medical problems. For Junior, a realization that he still loves the sport that made him a star. The desire is still there, and after Papa see that, he decided to give the opportunity and support his son. As always, his son been supporting to him. Father is well again, and son is hungry once more. But returning to the ring at age 35, after a long layoff, is just the first of a number of challenges in store for Team Trinidad. This fight has taken place at 170 pounds. We've never seen Felix Trinidad that heavy, but Felix Trinidad's last fight uh, against Winky Wright, he really looked ordinary. Right? And guess what? He hasn't fought since then. So he's not only naturally smaller, he's an inactive fighter. Look, how much has Tito fought in the last four or five years? Twice? I don't know if Tito has to work off ring rust or calcification. <laughs> gente que conocen de boxeo, con gente que no conocen mucho de boxeo, que no, no me han dado posiblemente la, la victoria. Si no, que la, la pelea, no, o sea, no puedo ganarle a, en este caso, Roy Jones. Pero no, yo estoy entrenando fuerte para este combate y voy a hacer quedar mal a todos esos que no van a Tito. So the right hand might work, the left uppercut might work, the right hook might work, whatever it takes for the job, what I do, I try to get my whole toolbox ready. I like this. I don't bring a wrench to the job, I bring a toolbox. For the last two years, Jones has been sharpening those tools, dulled by time, rebuilding with victories against relatively unknown fighters Anthony Hanshaw and Prince Badi Ajamu. It's admirable that a famous fighter who's fought on the biggest stages before the biggest crowds and the biggest media was willing to go off into hidden crevices in the fight scene uh, to restore himself. It felt good to be back to my old self, you know? Strange not being myself, not being able to do what I normally do. Maybe he just needed to get a win. He just needed to fight 10 or 12 rounds against anybody and not get hurt and not get knocked out. Still, some wonder whether Jones should be getting back in the ring at all. He spoke over and over and over about how he 
wasn't going to get hurt. And he, he just simply would not allow himself to be damaged by the sport. And now here he is, continuing to take what would seem to be an unwarranted risk. But Jones doesn't see it that way. I said Tito would be gone by four. And the more I think about it, I don't know if he's going to lay it that long. If there's one thing that Roy Jones still has, it's good hand speed. He's tremendously talented, tremendously skilled, and very fast. Same so measure character in person, but how do you come back? It's good when everybody's on top and everything's good for you, but can you come back? All of them want me to stop. You can go lay down and kick your feet up and say, that's it. You a Hall of Famer, you this, you that. Quit and call it a date. By no means is he the first fighter to take poorly to retirement. But only a handful of those who returned before him have found success. The question remains, will Felix Trinidad be among them? The fans who fill Madison Square Garden, they are our fans who remember the legend of Felix Trinidad. And I think Trinidad remembers that legend. And in his mind, it's not that long ago. So it might be that he still feels that he's not declining as a fighter, that he hasn't declined as a fighter. And obviously, he hasn't had very much wear and tear on his body over the last five or six or seven years. So maybe he feels, I can still do this, so why don't I still do this? Oh, yes. And there's the chance to fight a megastar who was, throughout most of Trinidad's career, the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport, Roy Jones. Yeah, he thinks that if he puts this particular notch on his gun belt, someday, years from now, people are going to look at that name and say, look at that. Late in his career, he knocked out Roy Jones. You fight Felix Trinidad in Madison Square Garden in New York City, that's going to be a big event, even if you're nobody. But Roy Jones is somebody. He brings his own name and his own celebrity. I didn't ask for him. He asked to do this. He ain't fought in two years. I didn't ask for him. He asked to do this. <laughs> Jones is looking for a performance that reestablishes that he's Roy Jones. Felix is a puncher. Well, I'm sure that the Trinidad people believe that if Felix lands one big left hook, one big straight right hand shot, Roy Jones is going to be in trouble. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people who want to see them fight. You're talking about the best talent in the last 15 years versus one of the best punchers in the last 15 years. No importa quién esté enfrente mío, Tito Trinidad siempre está bien positivo a ganar. Say what you want to say. Somebody got to go to sleep. <laughs>